That's that air mass replacement. I'll tell you about that and a couple of chances of snow on KX News. Coming up next on KX News at 6 on the anniversary of the infamous shootout in Medina, we'll hear firsthand from those who were there. And hours after plans for a new mural in downtown Bismarck were pulled, Another girl was vandalized. We'll tell you more. Plus, a flu bug is so bad, one school is canceling classes. We're going to take you to Surrey. Putting North Dakota first. KX News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Nicholas Paul. And I'm Lauren Culver. Thanks for watching KX News. We begin tonight with a somber anniversary. On this day in 1983, a Heaton farmer was the centerpiece in a shootout that killed two U.S. Marshals just north of Medina. Three other law enforcement officials were wounded, including a Medina police officer. Crime reporter Renee Cooper joins us to talk about the aftermath of the attempted arrest of Gordon Call. Good evening, Renee. Good evening, Lauren and Nicholas. The officer who was wounded is Steve Schnabel, who now lives out in Fargo. This morning, he told me that just three weeks after the shootout, everyone at the Medina Police Department was fired and the department was shut down by the mayor. Ever since, the city has been trying to forget it ever happened. But for Schnabel and the Medina Police Chief at the time, Daryl Graff, forgetting is not an option. To explain where the city sits today, we have to take a trip back to the early 80s. It was right here that shots rang out on this day 37 years ago at 5.50 p.m. Although there's nothing here that remains that would tell passerbys this was the site of a shootout, the memories of the deadliest day in North Dakota still linger over the city of Medina. They got two station wagons coming at you. It was wearing blue and blue. Gordon had, I believe, what is comparable to PTSD now. Um, it was called shell shock back then. And I think that's really what got the ball rolling. Gordon Call was a highly decorated World War II veteran. Before this infamous day, he was well known as a man with a kind heart. If he'd be parked along the road with car trouble, not only would be he be the first guy to pull over a stop to help you, but he'd get it running too. He had people that would disagree with his politics, but, but otherwise, Gordon was the number one guy. Call's politics are ultimately what put him in trouble with the law. He was a known tax protester in the day of the shootout. U.S. Marshals came to town where Gordon was meeting with farmers to arrest him for violating his probation. How I got involved is I thought they were looking for directions. Well, when I went up, met up with them, uh, they basically handed me a shotgun and said, here, you're helping us with a roadblock. 22-year-old Steve Schnabel was shot in the leg. Right afterwards, yeah, it was, it was a tough thing to deal with. Yeah, nightmares and all that good stuff. But Daryl was basically the scapegoat for everybody in this thing. A then 27-year-old Daryl Graff says he predicted what would happen. He even warned a local sheriff's deputy who was a part of setting up the roadblock that resulted in bloodshed. I told him this is not going to turn out good if a few people try to go out and round up this a uh, man and his family and friend. Not, it's not going to go well. Graf was stationed here, getting the ambulance and rescue squad ready. He said he would not let his police officers take part and was promised he wouldn't have to. I gave a 99% chance that he would not give up, and I give a 1% chance that he would. And Graf's instincts were right. The local people hated my guts because I brought all this trouble to town. And little do they know, I am the person that tried to keep. He moved to Fargo for 17 years after and then to Bismarck for 19 to avoid the town and the people who he says put the full weight of the incident on his shoulders. For both Graf and Schnabel, careers in law enforcement were no longer an option. I had a good family and a few pr a friends for support. And the rest of it was packing a gun and wearing a bulletproof vest wherever I went. And then people wonder why to this day I haven't gotten rid of the PTSD. Over 37 years, Graf and Schnabel have been stuck reliving this series of events that they say, both say they couldn't be completely avoided. And they even wrote this book outlining everything they've learned since February 13th, 1983. And Lauren and Nicholas, when I finish with it, you're welcome to have a stab at it. And we'll do that. Thank you so much. New developments now. Just a day after a local artist withdrew plans to create a mural of Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg downtown, another one of Shane Balkowicz's existing murals was vandalized. Eggs were apparently thrown at Liberty Trudges Through Injustice, which hangs in an alley off 4th Street. 
Bismarck police say they're still reviewing reports and won't have any more information on the vandalism until tomorrow morning. Belkowicz pulled his application for a, nur, a new mural because of threats of vandalism. A uh, school has decided to close its doors after the flu hit hard, really hard. Over 200 students didn't make it to class in Surrey today. It started Tuesday with 70 students missing and slowly climbed the rest of the week. The school board met last night and decided to cancel school on Friday. We spoke with the school board president who says this is the first time he has seen anything like this. We looked at, is it a safe environment to have the kids in school right now? And with Monday being a holiday, we thought it'd be good to get the kids out of the school for four days and away from each other. And he says that custodians will be at the school tomorrow to sanitize common areas. And he reminds parents, if your child is sick, don't bring them to school. Everly says schools will reopen Tuesday. A dispute about voter ID laws in North Dakota is coming to an end. The state has reached an agreement with Native American tribes that sued over a requirement voters have ID with a verified street address. While they will still need an address, they'll be provided with more resources to make sure they have that assigned residential address. Secretary of State Al Jager says he's happy with the two sides and what they reached. The agreement now goes to the Spirit Lake Nations Council and Standing Rock Sioux Tribes Council for formal approval. With Valentine's Day tomorrow, love may be in the air, but so are romance scams. We spoke to a detective at the Minot Police Department for tips to protect yourself. Scammers use fake or stock photos to create fake dating profiles. If you connect with someone, be sure to look for inconsistencies during conversations. Ask questions and alert friends and family. The number one tip, don't send money to people you've never met in person. A lot of times they claim they'll be overseas or um, in the military is another big one. Uh, different things like that. They'll send stock photos uh, claiming they need money for travel to get back to the United States. It's a very common one. And if you think you've been a victim of a romance scam or any scam, contact the police department to fill out a police report. The engineering field has quite a lot of men and a shortage of women. But a local program is out to prove that girls can dive into it too. STEAM education is a national initiative teaching kids the uses of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. But when it comes to engineering and specifically coding, it becomes male dominated. Now to change that, full STEAM ahead in Minot is partnering with Women United to help fund the national program Girls Who Code and bring it to Minot. The executive director of Full Steam Ahead says it's important to close th that gap. So we know nationwide and internationally that there is a gender gap uh, within the computer science world. Uh, females aren't pursuing careers in computer science um, professions uh, as much as males do. And we actually see that trickle down all the way to youth. If you'd like to help support Minot's Girls Who Code, you can visit our website, kxnet.com. And coming up tonight on KX News at 10, we'll take you inside a special meeting of Minot's school board. The topic, a controversial school lunch policy that has some parents upset. We'll bring you the latest at 10. But still to come on KX News at 6, an effort to lower your prescription drug costs is being pitched in the Senate. We'll see how well it's going. Plus, could we be seeing a big warm-up tomorrow? We'll talk about that and more in your full weather forecast in a bit. You're watching KX News at 6 with Lauren Kalber, Nicholas Qualick, weather with meteorologist Dave Holder, and sports with Joey Lamar. 